Hello and welcome. Thrilled to have you all back with us today uh, for another episode of The Nonprofit Show. And I'm thrilled to have with us Laura Ingalls joining us again. Uh, you've been with us multiple times, I want to say since March of 2020. Laura is the co-owner and CEO of Abeja Solutions. And she's here to talk to us about five ways that nonprofits block online giving. So before we dive deep into this conversation with you, Laura, because I'm really excited to learn more from you, we of course want to remind our viewers and our listeners who we are in case we haven't met yet. So Julia Patrick, CEO of the American Nonprofit Academy, so great to have you on. And I'm always so honored to serve alongside you as your co-host. I'm Jarrett Ransom, your nonprofit nerd, CEO of The Raven Group. And we continue to broadcast all of our shows. If you miss them, again, over 600. I think today is 612, but who's counting on Roku? <laughs> YouTube, Amazon Fire TV, as well as Vimeo. And if you're a podcast listener, you can cue us up there too. So go ahead and listen to The Nonprofit Show wherever you stream your podcast. We are honored to have the continued support from our amazing presenting sponsors. I invite you to check them out, but in about 28 and a half minutes would be best. And we want to give a shout out to Bloomerang, American Nonprofit Academy, Fundraising Academy at National University, Nonprofit Nerd, Your Part-Time Controller, Staffing Boutique, and nonprofit thought leader. Um, yes, we are counting our episodes because it's been a phenomenal milestone. Um, and before we went live, Laura did say, congratulations, you guys have really like found the secret sauce and what's working. So coming from a, a former CNN employee, Laura, that is just like huge kudos to us. So thank you. Uh, and of course, we want to say thank you to our sponsors that keep us going and growing with our guests like yourself. So we had Brianna, your um, your business partner on, gosh, it's been probably three weeks. Uh, we talked about mail, how direct mail really, you know, you can increase your return on investment there. But Laura Ingalls, co-owner and uh, CEO at Abeja, welcome back to talk to us about how we might be blocking our online donors. Yeah, thank you for having me. Um, you know, it might seem really counterintuitive, even ironic to be bringing on someone who is a male specialist, you know, all these uh, beauties that are now starting to go out for fall mailers. Yes. But um, what you might not know is that I used to run a national nonprofits digital team as well. And digital and mail should be best friends. They should go hand in hand to increase your response rates. Yeah. I love that you said that because I, I think we were chatting about this in the green room. And that is, I think there's a sense that if you do one, you got to ditch the other and, and instead of blending them. And so we're really excited to have you talk to us about that. And one of the first things you talk about is that hiding the donate button on the homepage. What? What is that? Yeah. <laughs> I, so, you know, I, I mentioned ironic because I want to uh, harken back to the oldies but goodies, uh, Alanis Morissette. Isn't it ironic? Isn't it ironic? <laughs> <laughs> Nonprofits would hide the donate button on their homepage, but it happens. Mm -hmm. um, you know, those donate buttons on your homepage need to be big, bold, and above the fold. And here's what I mean by that. Uh, I shouldn't have to hunt around, you know, I shouldn't have to put on my, my other glasses to try to find that donate button on your website. Make it big. I want to see it large. Best practice websites like Save the Children and Care you do not have to hunt around for those websites. You do not have to scroll down to find those websites. Mm -hmm. uh, it should be bold. It should be red, orange, hot pink. It should not be, uh, you know, it should not be harmonious in color with the rest of your branding. Uh, too many people are letting their branding agencies uh, sell them a bill of goods. It needs to be red, orange. You'll see that on those sites. And again, you shouldn't have to scroll down to that main donation page area or that main uh, homepage right, right. slider okay. on your website to find the donate button. Make it easy to find. I love that. Big, bold, and above the fold. Big, bold, and above the fold. And you will see, you will see tons of, I was on a website yesterday where you cannot find that website, that donate button, because it's actually white on a light background. Oh no. I know. I had to put on my special, my special old lady glasses for that. Well, I do have a question. Um, so I'm, you know, in vernacular, we're saying things like investment, contribute, transformational. 
what should that donate button say? Should it say donate? Should it say contribute? Should it say invest? Like what is the word we want to use? You want to use the word that your donors use. Okay. Donors know what donate means and donors know what give now means. Okay. Everything else is just fancy. And I'm a wordsmith by, I mean, that's what I do. I write donation letters, yes. emails, and landing pages to make sure that you have that seamless experience across all those things. Make it simple, keep it simple, and make it big. And is there a preference to left-hand side or the right-hand side of the screen? You know, there is a thing called the serial position effect mm -hmm. in which people remember in a series of things, they remember the first thing and they remember the last thing. Uh, and they have, and the things in the middle are just don't really register to them. So let me ask you, Julia, where do you look on a website for the donate button? I, I think it should be upper right. Upper right is where most people are looking. Yep. Okay. And okay. I also want to point out some people think that they can be clever and put a little heart next to their black or white donate button. No one is seeing that. You need to make, go look at care, go look at save the children. They're crushing that because they want people to be able to invest give to their emissions. Yeah. Wow. Okay. So we started off with a barn burner for number one. I'm like super excited. You've sold me on that. Now, number two, you, you talk about this and I need some help because I don't, I don't think I know where we're going. Website header and footer navigation on donate page. So ideally you're going to make one click from your homepage to get to your Donate page, that one click. Don't make me make multiple clicks. And when I get there, do not give me opportunities to leave your page. I'm a very distracted person. Uh, I have on my website a, an example of a nonprofit that gives 25 separate links on their page. They've got their header, they've got the footer of their website, and then they actually have side navigation that is tempting me to click off. Do oh not take me to click off your website, take my money. Yeah. yeah. Simplicity. That's what I'm hearing. Like make it as simple as possible because we really don't want to lose that donor or distract them with another shiny, shiny object off to the side. Wow. 25. No, get me to make my transaction. You know, what yeah. we, you know, what we haven't talked about yet is that of the traffic that comes to your website, only 17% converts and make a gift. 17%. So you are repelling 83%. That's the average donation page. We can do better. My mind just, it's blown. 17% is the conversion rate. So we're losing over 80% of the visitors. Now, is that to our website, Laura, or to our donate page? That's to your main donate page. Okay. And that's the latest oh uh, information from MNR benchmarks. Yeah. So, you know, we even more. We yeah, spend so hard. much time talking about print versus online. Let's not talk about that. Let's talk about improving conversion rates on our donate pages. Far too many of the small and medium nonprofits I talk to are not even tracking that, that data. And it's right. really easy to calculate, right? Okay, what? so then let's drill down on that. How often should we be tracking it, like quarterly, monthly, so that we can understand what's going on? Like, that's my first question. Like, you know, I would, I would make sure that I optimize my donate page before every major campaign. Yeah. I would look at the data from the last campaign. Is there anything that we can learn? And okay. what can I do to update it, to simplify it? Uh, we've got a client right now that is testing um, if they offer fewer options on the website page in terms of the amounts, do people give more? Do that testing in the early part of the year. So by the time you get to the end of the year, when most of your donations are coming in, you've got it mastered. So in general, do you think our donate forms have too many options? Because, you know, I feel like, I don't know, I, I feel like so many of us want to give, you know, the whole buffet to the donor so that we don't lose them, so that they don't become that 80 plus percent. But I'm thinking maybe, maybe that's wrong. You know, if you are consistently asking people to give, thanking them for their donation and reporting impact back to them, you have opportunities to educate them about other ways to give. Uh, you do not need to have your donate page do that heavy lifting. And I think a lot of nonprofits who are not being consistent, they want that donate page to be the free for all of all the options. 
Yeah. But what we know is, you know, in 2004, Barry Schwartz wrote a book called The Paradox of Choice. And while it may seem that giving people many options is the right thing to do, what his research found is that when you give people many options, they actually get paralysis and they can't make a decision and they're going to bounce off your page. So try to think of what are what is the least amount of things I can ask people to do in order to complete the donation. Then I can serve them up information about other ways that they could give in the future to try to retain them. So I would say narrow those choices down. If you go to those best practice websites I mentioned, you'll see they really only ask people for three things. Wow. You are such a brilliant mind. And I love how, so talk to us, because maybe I will love it, but talk to us yeah. about how the mail campaign and the donor um, online platform, as you said, like they should be best friends. And so um, are you seeing with your mail campaigns, like a landing page that is super simplified? Is that what you recommend? You know, I, I don't think you want to have you know, a lot of folks. Um, there are some payment processors that people put on their websites. And it's just basically a box that says, give us money. Uh, they don't have the option to have the same photo that appeared on your design mm -hmm. on your landing page. You should make that emotional connection. You made it in mail. You made it in email. That photo should also appear on your website or on your donate page so people know it's the same thing. Yeah. Um, you should tell a little emotional story. Very, very short. And there's some other information you should provide. But you shouldn't give people a million choices. It shouldn't be DAF and stocks and crypto and in memory of and in tribute of. And I want to give to these 16 funds, especially not at the end of the year. You might add one special thing in for a particular campaign that you have. For example, uh, if you've been around 55 years, you might have your $55 campaign. But do not provide a hundred million choices for me to have to wade through to get my money, get my money, then educate me about other ways that I might give. Yeah. And that's the thing I've learned from you again, like not, not just big, bold and above the fold, but the other one is ask, think, report, repeat. And you just make that cadence seem so simple, Laura. And, you know, of course we know that, but we try, I feel to just, Make it so complex. Yeah. Your donate page should not be a catch-all for the year. Your donate page at the end of the year in particular should be as slim as it needs to be to remind people why they love giving to you and to collect the donation. Yeah. Let your other communications do that heavy lift, not your donate page. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. Now, one of the magical things that I can't wait to have you um, share with us is the concept of the descending gift strings. That, oh, sounds yeah. pretty, that sounds pretty sexy, but it's pretty simple, isn't it? <laughs> and, and I see this quite often. Uh, it's either uh, top to bottom or left to right. You see folks start with the largest gift amount. And Julia, you said that's really, um, that's something that's really common in retail. Tell retail us about that. Yeah, yeah, pricing. Yeah, you. yeah, in terms of pricing, because, uh, you know, it makes the uh, the cheaper hand bag look more desirable when you talk, start out with the one that's super expensive. Yeah. In the nonprofit world, it has the opposite effect. It makes you feel like a cheapskate. First, you get sticker shock. You're like, wow, they're asking me for $5,000. I'm an individual donor. Whoa, that's way more than I gave last time. And then you go through these other gift amounts and finally you get down to what you gave last time. And you feel like a cheapskate. And th those negative feelings are not going to make me continue to give you my credit card information and make a transaction. Instead, conventional wisdom says use an ascending gift string. Just say, yeah, that's my gift amount that I, I gave last time. That makes me feel real comfortable. I know I can't give this amount, but maybe I'll land somewhere in the middle because it's been a really great year. You know, and I love the emotional thing that they're saying about the women's lives that I'm going to change about the pets that I'm going to help save. Yep, I, I can do a little better this year. So that ascending gift amount has positive emotions while a descending one has negative. That is fascinating to me. And now I'm, I'm thinking, you know, when I fill out a form either in person or online, you certainly do want to feel like a champion. Yeah, it seems yeah. like if you use the descending, it almost seems like, well, what is my gift gonna even do? 
Yeah. You, like you've, yeah. you've, you've um, narrowed the impact versus like, wow, I just, you know, going the other direction. Yeah. Um, and right now, you know, involved. everyone's budget is feeling the effects of inflation. Yeah. You're better off to give people a positive emotion about the change that they're making and allow them to uh, better deal it a little bit and say, yeah, I can give a little more this year because the need is so great. Now, one of the things we talked about in the green room, green room chatter is um, how some organiza organizations are starting to adopt artificial intelligence, right? And so can we and should we do the same ascending. So if we're using AI in our donor forms, mm -hmm. should we then have that ascending as opposed to descending in that form? Um, or are you saying that's too much for the online? Uh, no, I think, um, well, number one, uh, congratulations to digital for catching up to mail. You know, <laughs> mail, you can always have custom gift amounts on your reply slip. Yes. based on your donor's history. So I love that AI is now taking uh, the data it has, crunching it and making it work for nonprofits as opposed to those static gift amounts. Yeah. But no, I think the same emotional journey that we take our, our donors on is the same. Okay. Uh, they need to not have sticker shock off the, fur, off the top and then come down to the thing that's cheaper. They need to feel good about their donation and say, yeah, I can do a little better this time. Yeah. Well, I love that. I love it. And again, when you're talking about this, before we go on to our next question with you, you're saying really no more than three levels. No, I'm saying um, I'm saying that you should you should not be providing so many options. Okay, options. in your donation form. Um, no, um, I think the most nonprofits offer somewhere in the neighborhood of four to six options. Yeah, with yeah. one of those being, we're talking about gift strings. Mm -hmm. One of those being other. Um, okay, other. But I have seen, uh, there is a nonprofit whose example is on my website, uh, anonymized, of course, that offers people 10 different gift amounts, counting down from $5,000. 10 is too many amounts for me to consider. I can consider four or five gift amounts plus another. Okay. It makes me think of the cheesecake factory, right? We go eat yeah, at the cheesecake yes. factory or any, any other restaurant that just has a horrible amount of menu options. Yeah. And it's like, where do I start? Yeah, it, you know, absolutely. And, you know, the best exactly, gift arrays, but... the best gift arrays actually tie those amounts to real impact in your, yes, your organization, you know, um, yeah. you know, the cost of a door is going to help a child study or is going to give a hardworking parent privacy for a habitat group, for example, or the cost of a meal. The best buttons allow you to have that kind of conversation with your donor and not just offer, you know, not just offer pricing like a retail site. Right. right. I love it. Now, one of the last things that you talk about is failure to provide decision stage content. Well, we don't want to fail. So you got to tell us what this means. That's some fancy marketing talk, isn't it? <laughs> It sounds really good. It yeah. does. It makes so, me like, I need to know this. Yes. <laughs> so are you all, are you all familiar with the marketing funnel? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. This guy here. Yeah. This guy here. Oh, there you go. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So at the top is awareness mm -hmm. and there's consideration. Then there's decision content. Uh, donate page is you want people to. Make a decision on yeah. your donate page. Exactly. Awareness has already occurred. Consideration has already occurred, right? But too many nonprofits put, put homework on their donate pages. Mm -hmm. They put a video that I'm supposed to watch. I've got to read frequently asked questions. <laughs> uh, I've got to read the history of their organization. Yeah. No, no, no. You may, That's awareness content. That's consideration content. Yeah. Give me content that allows me to complete my transaction. Mm -hmm. So um, what kind of content is that? Well, people have questions right before they're going to make, a, they have objections and they have questions right before they're going to make a decision. Mm -hmm. Some of those questions are, is this a real nonprofit? Where is my money going to go? Is this secure? This looks a little hinky because sometimes nonprofits, maybe this is hinky security. Mm -hmm. um, what kind of content do you think you could put on a donate page that would answer those questions, ladies? What are your thoughts? 
Well, I'm definitely going to say our EIN number. So our 501c3 ding, 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 ding. number. Yep. Mm -hmm. And if you're in Arizona, your uh, Arizona charitable tax credit number. Yes. Yeah. We're right. a real nonprofit and somebody recognized that by giving us an EIN or a tax credit number. What are some other things that, that would make you feel better? Well, I think of like the, lo the logos that, that might come from some of the guard, uh, yeah. Watchdogs, yeah. you yeah. know, that say, you know, that we're part of this and maybe even a logo that might say we're a part of this coalition or we're, you know, something that is. That how about a gold? How about a gold scale of transparency by one of the watchdogs? Yes. Right. Right. Exactly. I feel good about that. That's third party validation yeah. for, right. for what for what we're doing. So those are some good things. People have now, business bureau. People have a uh, chamber of commerce. Um, accolades that they get, all of those things make me feel better that you're a reputable nonprofit. So my question is, and I'm not sure because you mentioned something earlier, do we want to provide click-through links or no, because we don't want them to go anywhere else? Yeah, I wouldn't like those seals. Okay. Don't okay. do that. Good question. No. Um, <laughs> the, the only thing, what, the one thing, a couple things that I would provide for people to click Yes, you should have a logo on this page. And yes, it should go back to your homepage. Okay. That's one thing that should be there. That should probably be the only thing in your header. Um, okay. And yes, you should have a link. So if someone has questions, do not provide frequently asked questions on this page. <laughs> they should be able to contact a real human and give, you know, give in the way that is most comfortable to them. If for some reason this donated page has spooked to them. So yes, provide a person's name provide a development email address, provide a phone number where they can go. Because remember, your average donor is probably 65 years old and they still use the telephone. Yeah, the, they're gonna call. They, they may not know who Alanis Morissette is. Um, <laughs> that and, I would you know, but they, they do know how to use the telephone and they do know how to make a donation. That's right. Wow, yeah. that's yeah. awesome. So I'm kind of, taken aback in that my sense of it is that we have to just like tell our story and jam everything onto the page and get all the information out but your whole thing is to say no reduce the clutter put these this information on other parts of your website um, but make that ultimate process simple and then to track that because that number that you gave us 17 percent conversion rate but how do we stay in business? How do we stay in business and provide, you know, our communities with what what our mission, vision, and values are at that rate? Well, you know, online giving is only twelve percent of all nonprofit revenue, so it's it's twelve percent. It is growing. That is exciting. But think about how much larger that number would be if we had a streamlined, emotional. Donation, donation page that made it easy to give and didn't provide those blockers. You know, I, I think about this in the restaurant world because we say, you know, if you have a bad experience, you tell everyone. Well, imagine walking into a restaurant and then leaving. Like, what if we're losing 80 plus percent of our patrons, right? Like as yeah. soon as they walk into the door, they see the menu that's full of options and they're like, I'm just overwhelmed. I've got to leave. Like that's what's happening on our donate yeah. sites. Yeah. And, you know, I don't want to overwhelm the folks who are listening to this, who are hardworking at nonprofits. It's been a tough few years. You don't know to need to do all the changes that I recommended. And in some ways, it can be very challenging to do that because some people's websites, they don't even have the ability to change them in-house. They have to go to an outside contractor. But can you make small changes in the right direction that make an optimized, simple, emotional way for people to transact and invest in your nonprofit. You can make some small changes, particularly before year end. Yeah. Thank you for saying that because yes. I certainly yeah. don't want anyone leaving the show, right? And thinking, oh my gosh, I'm doing it all wrong. Right. I just need to quit my job. You know, who do I think I am? But that big bold above the fold, that's what I want to drill down because I really yeah. do think that that is a simple, let's make that bold on the top right corner. Let's, you know, create it so that it's, you know, it's there, it's, it's not missed. And let's also make sure that our 
content on our donate page, ask them to take action. That's what we're doing. And those are, those are the two that I would say, look at that before year end. Yep. Reduce the friction, just make it easy and delightful to give. Don't give them homework. Don't make them have to swap out glasses to see <laughs> where is it on the website. I'm only 49 years old and I have multiple pairs of glasses for <clears throat> multiple tasks. Don't make them do that. Make it easy to find, make it seamless to give and make me feel good about my donation. And then you can do some of all those other things later in your other communications. Well, Loris, for someone who really is a direct mail nerd, I got to give it to you, my friend. You're a digital nerd too. So congratulations. You are just, you're amazing. I love when we can have, um, you know, representatives from Abeja. So Laura Ingalls has joined us today, co-owner and CEO of Abeja Solutions. Her business partner is Brianna. Uh, we've talked about her uh, quite a bit as well. And uh, the two of you really are, you know, I don't know, you're just fantastic in our sector. I'm so, so glad to know that you're here because not only are you wicked smart, I think you're wicked funny. So thank you. <laughs> hey, it's been great. This is a really an important time as we lead into this final push for the year. And so check out abejasolutions.com. Um, so many wonderful points and ideas. Again, if we haven't met or you want to be reminded <laughs> of who we are, I'm Julia Patrick, CEO of the American Nonprofit Academy. I've been joined by my trusty co-host, Jarrett Ransom, CEO of the Raven Group, known as the nonprofit nerd, but I always like to say she's my <laughs> nonprofit nerd first. So yeah, that's right. Pull those glasses up. I hey, know. We want to thank all of our presenting sponsors who are with us day in and day out. Bloomerang, American Nonprofit Academy, your part-time controller, nonprofit nerd, fundraising academy at National University, staffing boutique, and nonprofit thought leader. These are the folks that are with us day in and day out. Many who have been with us since day one, which is actually just amazing. Um, and so we want to make sure that we extend our gratitude and connect our sponsors to our viewers and our listeners. Okay, I'm telling you, Jarrett, I I'm overwhelmed, but I have a path. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Your marching orders. Yeah, yeah. I'm not so intimidated by the concept and, and thinking, oh my God, we got to pull down this website and start all over. I, I love Laura's um, approach and it's very doable. Very just, doable. Just always be learning. Don't set it and forget it. Just look at that donation page a few times type of the year. And at the end of the year, ask yourselves, how can we make it even simpler and more delightful for our donors to give? That's right. it. That's I love it. Well, you have been a delight. This has really been powerful and magical for us. And as we end every episode of the nonprofit show, we want to remind ourselves, all of our viewers, and all of our listeners, stay well so you can do well. We'll see you back here tomorrow, everyone.